place your offering in. So we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for giving. Amen. Got to take my breath here for a little bit, just jumping around. Praise the Lord. I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Um, and welcome today to part three of our sermon series entitled Set Free. My desire and most importantly God's desire is to set you free from any strongholds, from anything that holds you back, from anything that holds you from encountering God in a great way. And next week, we will conclude this series. But if you missed any of the series, I encourage you to go to our social media page, Facebook, um, Victory Assembly, and our Facebook page, and watch the previous weeks. You can go to our YouTube channel and uh, watch the services there as well. Um, because these last couple of weeks, we've talked about complaining. We've talked about criticizing. And how many know that when you complain, when you criticize, it kind of puts a a separation between you and God. Because what's happening is when we complain, we criticize, we're seeing things through our own lenses, through our own eyes, and not seeing what God wants us to see. So if uh, you're a complainer, you're a criticizer, I will encourage you to really change your perspective um, and see what God wants you to see. This morning, we're going to talk about lying. Lying. How many liars are in the room? how many honest people are there <laughs> how many of you would say that you lied in the last 24 hours raise your hands and leave it leave them up all right three four hands keep them up keep them up now all those that raise your hands look around look at the liars <laughs> look at the liars okay look at all the liars around and you say well pastor how are you calling me a liar I'm not calling you a liar. Statistically, there's, there's a phenomenal study that they made out there that, uh, that says that we have a tendency to lie four times a day. Four times a day. Now, the odds are that you are actually lying. Okay? Some of you may be offended by that. And I'm sorry if you are, but I'm just going to speak the truth this morning. Is that Okay. There's one study that was done by the University of Massachusetts, if I said that name right. (laughs) It says that 60% of people cannot meet a new person and within 10 minutes not say one single lie. In other words, when you meet someone, the first 10 minutes, you'll say one lie. I want you to think about that. Look at your conversations this week. And what I'm going to do today, that I'm going to speak and preach for five minutes and keep it within a 10-minute guideline, you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, and we can always laugh about it. But let me show you what God says about lying. Open your Bibles or we'll look at the screens to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. I'm going to look at the New Living Translation trans, uh, verse In verse 22, it says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell what? The truth. Let me say it again. The Lord detests, he hates lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. Now, I want you to understand that statement. The Lord rejoices with you when you're speaking the truth. But when we speak a lie or we say a lie, he hates that. He detests that. Now, in fact, the Hebrew translation for detest means something disgusting, an abomination. It means something that makes someone nauseous. So in all reality... What God is saying is, every time you lie, he's saying, you make me nauseous. Wow, what a power. We don't see God that way, do we? But in in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, when he talks about the church of Laodicea, he says, you are lukewarm, so I will spit you out. Some Bible translation says, I will vomit you out. Because God detests a lukewarm 
church. Let's go back to lion. In Revelation, I'm sorry, I already said that. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, look what Paul says. Beginning in verse 21. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Look what verse 22 says. Throw off your sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Verse 23. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Look what verse 25 says. Stop. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are parts of the same body. Amen? For we are part of the same body. Let that, let that get into your spirit this morning. So when we lie, we are separating ourselves. So listen carefully. For those that have been dishonest so far this morning for not raising your hands. For some, you already used up half of your quota of four. Okay. And the day's not over. Throw off that old nature. Since you know Jesus Christ, let him renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Don't raise your hand. But how many of us need an attitude adjustment? How many of us need to change our ways of thinking? How, how many of us need to change the way the words are kind of come out of our mouths? You know, these last three weeks, we've been focused on the mouth. The mouth has the power to kill and the power to bring life. The more you complain, the more you criticize, the more you lie, you are being destructive. Now, I'm not talking to the unbelievers this morning. I'm talking to the church. Because the church, the church can be bad about complaining. The church can be bad about criticism. The church, believe it or not, can lie. Now, look around you. See if there's a liar sitting next to you. Don't tell them this is for you. This is, this is for every single one of us. Okay? So stop telling lies. I heard a pastor, he puts it this way. He says, you may never be more like the devil than when you tell lies. Whoa. That's pretty strong. You are not more like the devil until you lie. It's a powerful statement. A lot of truth to that. But I think Jesus may agree with that statement. He says in John chapter 8 verse 44... Because he speaks of the devil and says this, For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his ca character. For he is a liar and a father of lies. Father of lies. we lie how we lie now in the same trans in a different translation John chapter 8 verse 44 the new King James the King James version puts us this this way when he lies he speaks his native language his native language his native language is to lie so when you are lying you're speaking the language of the enemy. And perhaps this is one of the reasons why God hates lying so much. Because his spiritual enemy, your enemy, my enemy, the prince of darkness, the great deceiver, the number one weapon that he has is to lie, to deceive, to take us away from the truth of the word. Amen. And we need to understand this morning that Jesus is the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. So in this series of being set free, I pray that this morning that when you leave here, you are set free from complaining, from criticizing. And if you're a liar, to stop lying. To stop lying. Amen. Are you with me this morning? 
The devil is a liar. And he uses lies to take us out of the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. In fact, I want to show you this morning what, what I believe is our enemy's three-point plan to get you to lie. Number one, if you're taking notes, number one, Satan wants to get you to lie. That's number one. He wants to get you to lie. That's his goal. Okay? And we, when we speak the language of the enemy, then we are lying. It could be something as simple as an exaggeration of a story. You ever exaggerate a story? You ever heard an exaggeration of a story? I've heard many of you guys tell me exaggerated stories. Why do we say that? Because we want to look better. We want to look better. It could be cheating on a test. It could be lying about where you were. Listen, young people, you tell your parents, I was at my friend's house, but in all reality, you were not. And like Kim tells to Nevaeh, I have eyes behind my head and I see what you're doing. Amen. Parents know best. So young people, don't think you got one over your mom and dad. You hear me now? Your lies <laughs> will, will give you up. All right? So, so it could be something about someone that you don't like. And you say, well, it's partly true. So it's okay to say half the truth. Half truth is a lie. How many know there's no such, no such thing as a white lie, a black lie, a brown lie? I don't care what color you put around it, okay? A lie is a lie. Amen? You say, well, pastor, it's a small lie. It's okay. No, a lie is a lie. You cannot tell God, God, I, I said part of the truth. God, it's not, it's not that bad. It's, a, it's just a little lie. He say, detest lying lips. You know, we tell partial truths. Something like, we may tell people, or people may tell us, because I've been told this a lot of times. You say something like, you cannot talk to me that way. And they begin to tell them, tell you a story, say, and they talk to me that way. They said this, and they said, you know what I told them? I said, the next time they talk to me that way, I want to do this and that to them. And you go to them, really? Did you really say that? No, 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 no. That's what I thought that I wanted to say. <laughs> Anybody been there? You say all this stuff like you did it, but in all reality, it was in your head, and you never acted upon it, and you exaggerated that. It's amazing how often because of our sinful nature we choose to speak the devil's language and lie. I'll be honest with you. I wish I could stand here and say I've never done that. But because of our sinful nature, every one of us, you say, well, pastor, you did? You know what? Let me give you some news flash. I'm human. I bleed red just like you do. I have emotions like you do. But we all become guilty of that we're not careful and the tragedy is that we give into Satan's schemes and end up speaking his language and we have a tendency to laugh about it we have a tendency to make fun well I just gave a partial truth I just said a little bit of lie number one he gets us to lie number two the devil gets you to lie to yourself what do you mean by that he gets you to lie to yourself not just to others you start rationalizing your lies. You start to feed off lie after lie. What I'm trying to say is you lie about the other lie because you want to cover your tracks. So now there's four lies. And you begin to lie to yourself. And sadly enough, you begin to believe your lies. You ever met somebody to believe their lies? I mean, to their death to believe their lies. You say, well... I'm not that. I'm not that bad. It's not a big deal. It's not my fault. I'm just a victim. It's everybody else's fault. It's not my fault. What happens? You keep lying and lying and lying. And that's exactly what happened to King David. 
King David in in, uh, in uh, uh, First Samuel, Second Samuel, he thought uh, he was above the rules, above the law. And while he was supposed to be in battle, he was on the rooftop of his house. And at the rooftop of his house, he see he sees this beautiful lady that's bathing, and he calls his servant, "Go bring me her to me. Bring her to me." So his servants bring her. He has an adulterous affair with her. Her name was Bathsheba. She was married. Then he assigns her husband to be in the front lines of battle so he could die. So he could die. And there was one lie after another. He wants us to speak his native language. Number two, he wants us to live the lie. And number three, and this is his masterpiece. Write this one down. Is what he gets you to live a lie. He gets you to live a lie. To claim one thing, but to be something completely different. Let me just say, obviously this is not all of you. Maybe some of you. Maybe some of those that are watching. It could be Mr. Christian. He walks into the church. He looks like he's a godly man, but he's dealing with pornography. It may be that couple that's attending connection group here at our church. And they walk in, they look like a happy married couple, but they're not even sleeping in the same bed. It may be the one that is thinking you have a perfect life on Instagram. You're putting pictures of your new clothes, your new outfit, your new hairdo, your new shoes, that latest vacation pictures that you have. You post it like life is going well for you, but you're dealing with depression in your life. I must speak some truth here this morning. You might be that Pinterest mom that you post everything about your house, how everything is handmade, everything is nicely decorated in your home, and everything is perfect. But deep down, you're dealing with something. And there's probably some of you this morning that you're feeling uncomfortable because you're being exposed today. The Holy Spirit is exposing you today. I think you need to ask God, thank you for your spirit exposing you today. It may be uncomfortable for you this morning, but it's actually you. The devil wants to tell lies. The devil wants you to believe your own lies. He ultimately, he wants you to live your lie. You know, quite honestly, and being serious and transparent with you this morning, this is a very serious, where sometimes I feel serious about it and I have to dig deep why. Why is this happening? It's one of my greatest fears because it becomes a great deception. I want to say to you this morning, the church as a whole, I'm not just talking about Victory Assembly, the church as a whole, there's a great deception of, over the church. Let me remind you again, the devil is a deceiver. And what I'm really afraid of this morning is how many churches but are deceived into believing that you are a Christian where in reality you are, you are not. One of the struggles as a pastor, I mean, and I speak for a lot of pastors, when they look at the congregation, they wonder how many of them are really trusting in Jesus. How many have their faith in the Lord? How many are being deceived? And there may be some here this morning who say, well, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Buddhist. I come to church. I must be a Christian. But yet, hear me carefully, there's no evidence of spiritual fruit or anything different than you and someone outside the church. You're being deceived. You're being lied to. You say, well, pastor, that, that's That's harsh. Sometimes the truth hurts. You say, well, pastor, I didn't bring my steel toe shoes. That's okay. You'll heal. I believe in God that heals. He'll heal your toes. 
But one, that's one of the greatest fears as a pastor I have. Some pastors are up all night because of their congregation is not where they need to be. And I pray, don't let me pastor a church who don't recognize the need of a Savior. During these last few months, we know that there's a falling away. Statistically, Barna Research said one-third of the church attendance came back to church when church opened up. Tell me two-thirds are out. They're not even watching church online. What is that telling me? They thought they were Christians. You're saying, well, pastor, I'm in church this morning. It must make me a Christian. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Just because you sit yourself in a garage doesn't make you look like a car. Am I right? Look at what John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 4 says about lying. I want you to get this in your spirit this morning, somebody. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a what? And what is not living? The truth. I know God, somebody may say, but yet there is no evidence of God in their life. There is no proof that you're living the walk. There is no proof that you're living by the standards of his word. You have been in a disobedient, lying believer, <laughs> if that's a statement. <laughs> You've been lying to yourself. Here's what it says. Whoever says, I know God, but doesn't do what his, his commands are, there's no obedience in your life. There's no life change in your life. There's no fruit. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace, the grace that leads us to do good works. Amen? Many people think, well, I want to do good, and that should get me in heaven. No, no, it doesn't, get, doesn't work that way. When we know God, hear me now. For some of you that are here today and you think you're a Christian and you're not, hear me carefully. Listen, what I was coming out of my mouth this morning. When we know God, suddenly there's a difference in you. When you know God, it doesn't mean you still live the same way you used to live. When you, when you know God, you want to stop cursing. When you know God, you want to stop smoking, drinking, doing drugs. When you know God, you want to live according to his word. When you know God, there's a distinguishment in what God sees you as a believer and the one that he's an unbeliever. Pastor, please calm down. I can't take this no more. My toes are flat. There are some that say, Pastor, I'm not a bad person. I'm just okay. The truth is not in you. The truth of God's word is not in you. It's the de devil's native language to get us to lie. Why do we lie? Why do we lie? We lie because we don't trust God. We lie because we don't have a relationship with God. We lie because we want to make us look good. We lie. We lie for different reasons. Kim lies to me. What? Kim lies to you, Pastor? This is what I mean. How you doing, babe? She'll say, I'm fine. And I know she's not lying. I'm fine. She's trying to make me feel better. But she's actually lying to me. You're saying, well, that's not no big deal. A lie is a lie. <laughs> I, think you got, I think you got some support over there, right? <laughs> and let's be real. You walk into church this morning, somebody said, how are you doing today? And you say, I'm doing great, but deep down you feel horrible. 
As soon as you walked in, somebody said, hey, how you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. And you're lying because you're feeling miserable. Your back hurts. Your foot hurts. Your, your, your eye hurts. Your nose hurts. Your lip hurts. Your toenail hurts. We lie. We lie. You say, well, pastor, that's just very petty. We're speaking the devil's language. How many speak very fluent Spanish in the room. Lift up your hands. Couple. But if I say, tell me hello in Spanish, what do you say? Now, you say, hola, now I speak Spanish. <laughs> Come on. How do you say Goodbye. You see? And you go around exaggerating. I know Spanish. I know adios. I know, I know hola. I know the bathroom, baño. I know agua. I know Taco Bell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we say we know Spanish. In reality, we don't. We say we know God, but actually, in reality, we don't. We don't know. We don't have the truth of his word in us. So the root reason that most of us lie is because we don't trust God. We believe the lie will work better than the truth. We believe that the lie may keep you safe. If I tell a lie, I won't get in trouble. But suddenly when we lie, we're actually not safe anymore. And we may think that if I tell a lie, it will make me better. The problem is that your relationship is then it's built on lies. Your relationship is built on lies. So let me remind you again who the devil is. He's the father of lies. What is his native language? He's lying. His greatest tool to deceive you from the truth. We believe truth is a person. And he has a name. And his name is Jesus. We sang a song, what a beautiful name it is. That's the name that sets us free. I know Jesus. The question is to you. And if you do know Jesus, are you living for Jesus? And if you're living for Jesus, is there a transformation in you? Or are you still caught up in your old ways? In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Set you free. Set you free. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Lies bring bondage. The truth brings freedom. Somebody needs to write that down, put it on social media right about now. Lies bring bondage. The truth brings freedom. Satan wants us to tell a lie. He wants us to believe the lie. He wants you to live a lie. And Jesus wants you to walk in the truth. He wants you to experience the truth. And he wants the truth to set you free. So what is Satan's plan? Come on, shoot it out. He wants you to do what? He wants you to lie. He wants you to believe the lie. He wants you to live the lie. God's plan is very simple, very powerful, very free. His plan is simply to confess to God. He wants you to confess to him. Ask God for his forgiveness. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says this, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. To cleanse you from all wickedness. To cleanse you from lying. To cleanse you from complaining. To uh, uh, cleanse you from criticizing. We need to understand that if we confess our sins to God, what is he? He is faithful and just. He cleanses us. I want you to hear this. He cleanses us. He forgives us. He separates us from our sins as far as from the east to the west. Somebody can praise God for that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God because of his son watches our sins away. 
We confess to God not for his sake, but for our sake. He's already know you sinned. Let me, let, me, let me put this out. He even knows you're going to lie before you even lie. Think about that for a moment. Before a lie comes out of your mouth, he knows that lie. So it's not for his sake. It is for your sake to ask God for forgiveness. But that's only a portion of the life-transforming power of confession. And this is where many people stop. Because when we lie, not only we need to ask God for forgiveness. Lord, I pray, God, forgive me. And I go to Kim and say, hey, baby, I'm sorry. I lied to you. I'm sorry for saying this. That wasn't true. Why did I do that right now? Because he's not only faithful and just, but the confession of my mouth to someone else brings healing. It brings healing. So think about this for a moment. The last person you complain about, the last person you criticize about, the last person you told a lie to, and you say, God, forgive me. That's just half the healing process. A lot of people are not set free because they have not confessed that to the other person, and there's no healing there. Think about that. You may say, well, I brought it up to the Lord. That's where it stays. No, it doesn't. About the people you hurt. About the people you talk about. Worship team, if you don't mind coming forward. Listen to me today. The devil is a liar. Amen? The devil is a liar. Jesus wants, to, wants you to experience the truth. Which leads us to freedom. I want you to stand with me this morning. I know the Holy Spirit has tugged on your heart. The Holy Spirit has shown you, has exposed you this morning. You didn't realize this morning that when you came to church, that you will be exposed as a liar. Not many of you that came today, you knew I was talking about lying, but you didn't know it was going to hit so close to home today. So I'm going to ask you one question that I opened up with. How many lied the last 24 hours? Hey, more hands went up. Check that out. Some of you are still lying, but... <laughs> but listen, all seriousness aside, we need to go to God confess our sins to him. This is what you need to understand. Just because you're in this building doesn't make you a Christian. This is the confession of our mouth that we are saved, we are renewed, we are restored. See, restoration takes you back to what you need it to be. When we lie, it separates us further away from God. Think about this. If statistically it's correct that we lie four times, at least four times a day, that's four times further away from the Lord than we ought to be. Thank you, God, for a second. <laughs> this is where he wants us to be walking with him but I just lied I lied again I lied again I lied again Ricky is the father of lies <laughs> see where I'm at I'm closer to the enemy The enemy just took me away from the truth. Let me put it closer to home. We're in church, worshiping God. We think we know God. But we're not living by his word. We're not obedient. There's no fruit of him in our lives. We just have a title. It's further. 
the way. How far are you from God today? How far are you from God? Well, pastor, I'm a leader in the church. I must be close to God. I'll tell you what. And I'm just going to say, name these titles. doesn't mean that they're lying and they're far from God. I'm just going to illustrate. I'm a deacon in the church. How can I be far from? I know some deacons called the demons in here. Not in this church. We've got a good deacon board. But there are people that say, well, I'm a deacon. I'm a teacher. I'm a leader in the church. How can you tell me? I don't know God. I'm not telling you. It's what the Bible says. There will be fruit, spiritual fruit out of your life. Some of your fruit is so rotten that they spiritually stink to God's nostrils. I was going to let up, huh? I'm still stepping on toes. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just begin to speak into our hearts. Lord, let the truth begin to be embedded into the hearts. Father, there are some that have been exposed. Some have been called out by your Holy Spirit today. Exposing them of their lives. Father, I pray this morning, before we even leave this place today, we make things right with you. That we could leave here today knowing by the confession of our mouth that you don't hold no sin, no lie. You put it as far as from the east to the west. But Lord God, there has to be a confession. There has to be our part. Lord, you've done already your part. You've died on the cross for us. You shed your blood to wash our sins. But Lord God, our part is to come to you. Is to confess that you are the Lord. To confess our sins to you. To say, Lord, I'm sorry for lying. I'm sorry that I have been so deceived. Saying I know God, in reality I don't know God. I want you to be real with yourself. God already has your number. He already knows exactly who you are today. Maybe you need to step out and just kneel at the steps here. Oh, Pastor, I don't want nobody to know. In all reality, every single person needs to be out here. Whether you lied one a day, four times, or ten times a day. Maybe you're a habitual liar. That nothing that comes in your mouth cannot be believed. I've met some people. Everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie. But they don't see that. So as the our worship team leads, I'm going to open up these steps. I want to encourage you, just pour it out to the Lord today. Just pour it out to the Lord. To know that I lied and the Lord detests that, that is abomination that makes them nauseous it sickens me but I can do that to the Lord I don't want to get to heaven and say God I knew better and I didn't follow through so as the worship team leads Allow the Holy Spirit to direct you this morning. Maybe it's to kneel. Maybe it's to stand. Let's make things right with God where we can today. Come on, let's worship together.